Hey, it's our first What's Up Doc in the new year. Can't wait. Always enjoy this mm -hmm. segment here on Thursday mornings out of the 830 News where we spend some time with the experts from Mercy Health. And this morning is absolutely no exception to that one. Uh, COVID-19 vaccine has arrived in Rockford and healthcare workers across the region are being vaccinated to help slow that out, down the spread. Uh, it's important to know where there are several steps to go before it's available to everyone. And well, let's get some questions answered. And here to answer those for us is Dr. John Dorsey, Chief Medical officer at Mercy Health. Dr. Dorsey, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming back on the show. You were you were one of our favorites the first time uh, that uh, I guess season 1 of yeah. What's Up Doc, you were you were one of the one of the stars of the season. We appreciate you uh, <laughs> you know being talked into coming back on with us again. All right, glad to help. I'll I'll try to live up to my reputation. Oh, <laughs> sure it should be no problem. <laughs> hey, how have the last few weeks gone for you with this vaccine rollout for staff? Oh, it's gone uh, tremendously uh, well, uh, better than uh, than expected. We have uh, uh, vaccinated, I believe, uh, seventy five to eighty percent of our total workforce. Um, it's uh, it's it's been absolutely amazing. The staff, uh, the the folks that have uh, uh, figured out how to do this well. I mean, they've just done a tremendous job, and we're so thankful for them. And what kind of uh, what percent of your staff is 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 taking the vaccine already? Yeah, I, I uh, believe it's about 80% of the staff have taken the vaccine. Uh, we've had a very, very good response. Okay. Yeah, it, it, well, you know, we're, there's there's been a lot of talk, I guess, doctor, about, uh, you know, how, how this gets parsed out. Uh, you know, who, who's in the front of the line? Who's in the middle of the line? Who's in the back of the line? Are we going to move the line around a little bit? But I don't think there's much doubt about healthcare workers should be right there at the front of the line. Right, right. You know, there were federal guidelines that were uh, given to the states. And uh, those basically prioritized uh, healthcare workers uh, at the uh, at the front of the line, and um, uh, uh, the states were allowed some flexibility uh, in uh, subsequently uh, determining who would fall into uh, particular categories uh, based on things like uh, ages and such. Uh, but uh, it's been uh, very consistent that uh, the healthcare workers are the frontline folks that, that are getting the uh, that are getting the vaccines. You, and that's what we have followed, and that's what the state of Illinois has uh, has followed as well. You you yourself part of that eighty percent that's gotten the uh, at least the first stage. I got my second shot yesterday. Yes, oh. I am. Uh, any uh, any side effects for you or anybody none, else? You know, no, 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 none, none whatsoever. Um, you know, I think there's uh, 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 first of all, most people don't have any side effects. Uh, generally, if you're going to get a side effect, it's uh, with the first shot. It's more typically a sore arm, kind of just where the shot goes in, which is, you know, pretty typical no matter what kind of shot you mm -hmm. get. And um, there were in the studies uh, uh, some folks when they got their second shot that would have some mild symptoms for a few hours, things like headaches and uh, maybe a little nausea, uh, maybe a little muscle aching. And, um, and that was in a very, very small number of uh, folks that got the vaccine, and it was very transient. And, and actually, that's that's just reflective of the fact that the immune system is responding. That's, uh, although we don't want anyone to feel bad, it, it's indicative that the immune system got the message and, uh, and is formulating a response. Similar to when one gets a flu shot, then, it seems. It, exactly, exactly. It's, uh, you know, the technology with the uh, two vaccines that have been uh, given emergency use authorization is different from the influenza vaccine, but, but the body's response is is the same no matter how the vaccine is prepared. I guess a, a question for you know for the lay people like us, you know, I know there's a there's an incredibly complex answer, and maybe there's a boiled down one. How does this vaccine work, and, and what's the difference between the, the the two that have gotten the emergency use author, authorization? Sure, sure. Well, when you think about it, the goal for a vaccine, right, is to it's to uh, 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 it's basically to get the body, the immune system, to recognize the actual virus if it ever enters the body and to respond to that. And so, uh, you know, vaccines are really one of the great advances in uh, medical history in terms of its effect on humanity. You think of things like polio and measles that have uh, uh, virtually been uh, uh, minimized uh, uh, as a result of vaccinations. So normally what happens is Somebody tries to grow a large amount of a virus and then weakens it or extracts parts of the virus and then injects that, and then the immune system responds. The particular technology for the two vaccines that are released is using something called messenger RNA. 
Um, it's not DNA. It's not RNA. It's not going to change your nuclear uh, <laughs> uh, genetics. Uh, but messenger RNA is a protein uh, that comes from the virus. And, and the bottom line is this technology is about 30 years in development. Um, and once the uh, COVID virus was sequenced, very quickly, uh, within about a month or so, they were able to develop a messenger RNA. Bottom line is you inject the messenger RNA, the immune system gobbles it up, recognizes it. And when the virus, if it does enter the body, uh, the immune system goes to work and shoots out antibodies. Um, the second part of your question, uh, the Pfizer vaccine uh, has to be given two shots three weeks apart. It has to be stored at very frigid temperatures. I think it's around minus 80 degrees, somewhere around that. Um, the AstraZeneca is given uh, in two shots, four weeks apart, and it is a normal cold storage, and it has a little longer half-life. Um, so it's, it, sits, uh, it sits on the shelf uh, for a longer period of time and able to be used. But both vaccines are about 95% effective. Yeah, so we got uh, we got at least two. We might have might have a third vaccine uh, coming out here in, in a little bit. Uh, two questions. Well, first of all, what uh, which ones did you guys take? And is there anybody that should want one or the other? Or are they are they all the same? Right. Uh, so we um, Pfizer was the first one that was available. So that's what I got, and that's what most of the healthcare workers uh, have received, probably based on supply. Uh, Moderna. Um, is the vaccine that's going to come out uh, for the majority of folks. Uh, that's the one that has the uh, four weeks and doesn't require anything other than usual cold, uh, cold storage. Um, in terms of who shouldn't take it, uh, the main folks that we worry about are people who have what we call anaphylactoid reactions in the past. So those are real severe allergic reactions. And I, I'm not talking about uh, somebody who might get a little rash or something from, say, penicillin. But we're talking about people that have a potentially life-threatening reactions, uh, uh, either that could be to foods or, or medications or whatever, where, you know, they're, they're, they potentially have troubles breathing or a significant uh, gastrointestinal problems, th things like that. We, we worry about that um, because those, there was a handful of individuals in both vaccine trials who had allergic type reactions of that sort. It's kind of people who carry EpiPens, people who may have terrible, life-threatening, uh, say, reactions to bee stings. Those are the folks that we worry about um, and that we're advising uh, perhaps they shouldn't get the vaccine. So just, so just, and just to clarify about, about the two vaccines, are, are there any uh, health scenarios where one vaccine is better or maybe even conversely, one vaccine is worse for, for somebody in a certain situation? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, they're, they're, they seem to have uh, equal efficacy and uh, both, both work um, uh, very similarly. They all use that messenger RNA technology. So I, I don't know of any one uh, group that should, should worry about receiving one or the other. Um, Whatever is available is what people should get. If you're just joining us, we're spending some time with Dr. John Dorsey, Chief Medical Officer at Mercy Health. We're talking uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Dr. Dorsey, I see this morning that uh, Governor Pritzker said Illinois is going to lower the minimum age for the next round of COVID-19 vaccinations to uh, 65, uh, dropping it uh, from 75 to 65 years of age. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, again, the states have the ability to modify to some degree the federal guidelines, and the federal guidelines came out at 75 so we know that anyone 65 or older falls into a high-risk category. And then when you subcategorize that, anyone 75 or older is at even higher risk. So that's where the federal government came out with 75. Uh, but I agree with the governor. 65 is really, uh, I think, the right cutoff because that's when the risk starts to, uh, starts to go up. Um, I, you might not have an answer to this, and that, that's fine. I, it, sign ups have been available now for people to uh, get on the list to receive the vaccine. What kind of time frame are we looking at for those folks? Weeks, months? Um, yeah, and, and probably Dr. Martell and uh, the health department uh, are, are better able to answer this. And, and I have to just talk about Dr. Martell, who has done a fabulous job. She and her department. I mean, working tirelessly to get us to the point of where we are. My understanding uh, uh, is that we're looking at probably a month or so 
from this being more widely available to the general population. But um, that is nothing that I've heard uh, uh, directly, so don't, uh, don't put too much emphasis okay. on that. But I think that's a reasonable time frame. Now, this is uh, asking you for a, a little bit of speculation, if you're comfortable in doing so. Uh, assuming that the, uh, the, the the shots roll out the, the way you, you would like to see them rolled out, the amount of people get them that are, are, are supposed to get them and, and would, would benefit from them. What do you see happening? Where do you see us at six, eight months from now? Right, right. Well, I uh, <laughs> certainly at a better spot than where we are right now, which is, which is uh, exciting. I mean, I think that... Um, uh, we'll be in a better spot with respect to herd immunity. We're going to have a lot of folks uh, immunized. Um, so I believe we're going to be able to go back to uh, uh, more normal behaviors. Um, there are some uh, uncertainties right now. For example, we don't know how long the uh, antibody response to the vaccines are going to, uh, to last for. Uh, that is being studied, but it, it's too early in the development of the vaccines and the administration to know that. We also don't know right now whether or not if, uh, say, uh, say I got the vaccine, um, but uh, let's say uh, I'm exposed to someone who's got the virus, maybe I won't get sick, but maybe I could potentially transmit that virus to somebody else who hasn't been vaccinated. We don't know that yet, and that's being studied. So I guess what I'm saying is that we want to be guardedly optimistic. I think things are going to uh, turn around. But in the meantime, um, I can't emphasize enough that uh, viruses like this only live as long as they find a host, which means another person. So transmitting it from one person to another person just perpetuates the length of time that we're going to have to live with this pandemic. So good hand washing, masks, social distancing. It is so simple. And it's so kind, and it's the right thing to do. And that's also how we stop the spread of this. Doctor, I'm sure you uh, you pay attention to things and uh, are aware that not everybody is on board with getting the vaccine. And, uh, and, and there's, there's a certain segment of the population, you know, you're, uh, you're anti-vax, you're probably lost, you're not going to get them back. But even even people that I know that are, are, are on board with masks and, like you said, social distancing, like that, that's what we need to do, are hesitant to get the virus or, or to get to get the vaccine, how does that messaging need to change? And, and what would you do to convince more people to get the vaccine? Right, right. Well, I, I, I do understand that uh, this is brand new technology, although it, uh, it really isn't. It's been 30 years in development and it's actually used in uh, cancer therapies. And this is going to be a breakthrough. But I understand that this is new technology, a new vaccine, uh, and people worry about uh, side effects uh, long term, and uh, so so I get that. Um, and uh, uh, obviously, there's anti-vaxxers who have uh, uh, significant difference of opinions from me regarding uh, vaccines in general. But um, I think over time, uh, as we get more data, as people get the vaccine uh, without side effects, I, I think some of those uh, folks who are uncertain are going to come around. Um, but I can tell you, if you talk to uh, patients who have been sick and recovered in the hospital, families of people who have died, um, this is a terrible, terrible disease. Life-changing, um, changes families. Um, in my opinion, my, my calculation is uh, the vaccine is a hell of a lot less risky than uh, uh, potentially acquiring the virus. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think one of the things we don't know, and this is what's so perplexing is we know there are high risk groups, but we know that there are individuals who don't fall into those high risk groups who die of the die of the of the virus and um, anybody could be susceptible and uh, we just don't know how if you get it, how you're going to do, you know, so my calculation is the vaccine's well worth it, uh, but I respect others uh, have a different opinion. He's Dr. John Dorsey, Chief Medical Officer at Mercy Health. Dr. Dorsey, we know how busy you are, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate you carving time out of your day for us. Once again, this was highly informative, and we really, really appreciate your time. I'm glad to help, and, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, we're on the way, and so uh, there's some, there's some uh, optimism here. So thank you for having me. You bet. Dr. Dorsey, have a great day.